Hello, my loyal subjects, and welcome! Today, we're going to be talking about physically based shading, specifically covering the Fresnel effect and reflections in general. Uh, now, I want to kind of give a little bit of an apology for the delay on this video. Uh, I was sick for a while, as in couldn't talk sick. I tried to record a bunch, um, and then it's just been a really stressful week, so... Uh, yeah, I... I'm really sorry that it's been so long since I followed up on this. I meant to kind of bullet these tutorials out about once a week, and it didn't work. So anyway, without further ado, let's dive into the next part. So first, let's do a brief overview of the Fresnel effect and its various components. So first, edge reflection. This is what the Fresnel effect is. Objects become more uh, reflective at grazing angles. And... Uh, what that essentially means is that your surfaces reflect more light when light grazes off of them. Now, the other thing about it is that as a surface becomes more rough, as the roughness property goes up, the Fresnel effect fades, that edge reflection fades, because of various reasons I'm going to actually cover in a second. But uh, the other thing is that the value we use to drive how light interacts with the surface and how reflective the object is is referred to as index of refraction which starts at about one meaning very very low um, reflectivity and pretty much goes up to infinity but generally about 1.5 and 1.45 are both really good values to use anyway but basically the Fresnel effect um, what it is in its whole is it's the mathematics to describe how reflective at any given point an object is. Now, first I want to dive into what is roughness, because a lot of people don't necessarily understand roughness, what it is, and what it actually represents. So imagine this is your polygon surface for a second. You've modeled a wonderful 3D model, and you, here's the surface of it. Now, what roughness is trying to approximate is a bunch of bumps and ridges in the surface. So when light comes down and hits it, it gets bounced in a bunch of different directions, not just directly skated off the surface. What this basically creates is the blurry reflections you see in uh, how glossy, for example, interacts with roughness. But with Fresnel, there's kind of an interesting behavior, because what ends up happening is Fresnel says that when you gray when light hits at a grazing angle it is more likely to reflect off than if it hits dead on you can think of this sort of like skipping a stone off of a lake um if you throw it at a grazing angle it's more likely to skip off and continue on the problem is that imagine for a second skipping a stone off of a wavy lake well you're more likely to just hit the side of a wave and that's kind of what we're going to be trying to approximate and setting up so in this case you can see that all these light rays are kind of hitting not necessarily directly dead on but even if they did reflect back into the surface or whatever they would eventually hit dead on and it becomes more and more likely as the surface becomes bumpier and bumpier and bumpier so anyway <clears throat> as a result the Fresnel effect we can set this up as a simple uh, reduction of the Fresnel effect so let's look at the Fresnel node for a second. You might notice something a little bit weird. So I said it fades with roughness. So clearly it should have a roughness property. If you've seen people complaining about how incorrect Blender's Fresnel is, uh, it's not some in-depth mechanical problem. It's that they didn't approximate roughness in any way. Fresnel node as a node is actually correct. It's just scientifically correct and doesn't take into account that roughness is an approximation. So... Yeah, I mean, this is like, they took the math and wholesaled it, but the problem is the math is based on, like, it hitting a point, not, like, a pixel. And a pixel can be technically more than one point. Anyway. So, yeah. Um, what the fuck, Blender? However, all hope is not lost. We have node groups and all kinds of cool tools at our disposal to actually address this problem. And actually work around it. So, onwards to Blender! and on to a blender. So, let's start off and let's drop down our Fresnel node. Now there's a really cool mechanic you can do in Blender where if you select a single node and you hit Control-G, it'll actually add the inputs and outputs for that node automatically. 
uh, set your defaults and everything. So if you've got a node that's already close enough to the inputs that you want, you can actually drop one down, hit Control G on it, and it will make it the uh, it'll make a node group that essentially mirrors it. Um, it only works if you only have one selected. So anyway. We can just hit Control G and we get the index of refraction and normal all automatically set up. Give yourself a little bit of room in the node graph because we're going to need it. Now, as I said, as uh, we go and increase our roughness, I want it to uh, get closer and closer to like it's hitting dead on. Now, there's a little bit of a mechanic here that I kind of want to cover. If you drop down a geometry node and use the incoming property um, and you plug that into Fresnel, um, because basically what this normal is, if you've ever wondered what that is, that's the direction the surface is pointing. And when you leave it unconnected, it's not actually unconnected. It's the equivalent of uh, using the geometry node, grabbing the normal and plugging it in. It's just Blender's doing that under the hood. It's just being sneaky about it. Anyway, that'll come in. That'll be important later. But basically we're describing what direction the Fresnel node thinks the surface is pointing. We can use this to cheat in the roughness. So in this case, we need a color mix because we're going to say as it gets more rough, we're going to use more and more as though it's hitting dead on. We can use the direction the light's coming from and say, hey, yeah, I'm facing the direction the light's coming from, which is basically saying, hey, it's hitting dead on. Um, so we've added our color mix. We can take the slider on it and expose that by clicking and dragging it over um, to that little clear dot on the bottom of our group input. That'll actually expose it as a slider. You can kind of see it in the background. It's quite nice. But, um, yeah, anyway. So let's drop down a geometry node and incoming. Incoming is the direction the ray is coming from. So we can use this. And if we say, hey, you are facing the direction the light is coming from, it's essentially just saying, hey, you hit dead on no matter what. No matter what direction you're coming from, you'll always hit dead on because, of course, I'm always facing in the direction that you're coming from. This is kind of a cheap approximation of how roughness fades off. It's actually very accurate. It's actually used in a lot of physically based renderers. So anyway, there we should have our lovely Fresnel node. We've got a lovely slider for roughness. We have index of refraction. And of course, the way it works is that as our roughness goes up, we say, hey, it's more and more likely to hit dead on. But if we go and we preview, you might have a little bit of a reaction sort of like this in the form of what the fuck is going on. Well, you know how I mentioned that Blender kind of plugs in the geometry node behind the scenes, that little geometry normal you see on the left side? Remember that normal is the direction the surface is pointing and it needs that? The problem is that Blender does this automatically and it's not a complete genius on how it does this. Because the problem is that even though we've called it normal and it looks like a surface direction, Blender doesn't see it as that. It sees it as color one of a mix node, then being converted. Like we're converting it to a color, which makes it not a surface direction anymore. Blender doesn't realize it is. Anyway, we're basically confusing Blender. Uh, Blender's basically tripping up on this weird conversion thing we're doing because we're converting it into a color, blending it, and then converting it back. It's weird. So we can easily remind Blender by just adding a bump node by just adding a bump node, we can actually remind Blender, hey, this is a surface direction, just make your strength is zero. Um, this will remind Blender it's a surface direction and remind it to, hey, this needs to be connected. So now we've got this lovely Fresnel node that as we increase our roughness, you can see the edge reflection goes away, but we still keep our lowest reflectivity, which is very important because virtually no object has no reflection. Even cardboard is reflective. Uh, even stone is reflective. Matter of fact, it's very important to how it's lit, and in order for it to be consistent between multiple lighting environments, it needs to actually have that reflection because the reflection is part of how it looks the way it does. You have a tendency to make your diffuse maps brighter if you don't have it correct, or if your reflection is too low, and that means the moment you go to a night scene, it's going to look a lot brighter than it should. So, enough talk. Let's actually test it in a material. Let's throw that into a mix shader, and into a white glossy shader. Make sure the glossy shader is completely white because remember that Fresnel defines how bright a reflection is. So we shouldn't be tinting it unnecessarily or messing with the math. So you just use white. Let Fresnel drive how bright the reflection is. 
And if we just preview this on a material, it looks nice and gorgeous. Look at that. So pretty. Um, yes, we, but that is not all. We can make it even better. So, first of all, if we examine our graph a bit, we can notice a few things. First of all, those three nodes I've moved over to the right side, those are the three nodes responsible for our reflection. Now, one of the basic rules here is that they need to have the same roughness property because it's how bumpy the surface is. They all need to know that. Ignore the diffuse roughness, by the way. That's technically... Blender, we're kind of dumb in naming it diffuse roughness, but I won't get into that. Um, it's not actually the same thing as every other roughness property in Blender because Blender... Whoever, whoever named that roughness, um, please get smacked. Please. Anyway. So, without further ado, let's select those three nodes on the side, hit Control g Now, it'll take, uh, it'll make it into a lovely little pass-through node for us, and we can just expose the values we need to, in this case, roughness, index, or refraction, and normal, and just leave glossy at white, because, again, it, unless we're dealing with metals, it'll always be white. So there, rename, set your defaults as you like, and boom, you're done. Also hit that fancy little F button to save it. And now we can construct materials a lot easier. So here's an example of a non-metallic material like plastic or stone. Again, you can just tweak the roughness to get a different visual look. Um, that's the one on the left. You've got wax, you've got uh, glass, that's physically based glass, by the way. Uh, handles darker materials and rough materials a lot better than the built-in glass shader. Um, so yeah, there's stuff like that, and obviously you can uh, hit Control g on these to turn them into node groups themselves and make even cooler materials out of them. So, hopefully this was informative to you, and Cthulhu Vodachen, etc. And if you make anything cool, throw an image in the description. I know this was a bit of a bulleted tutorial, but uh, I'm sitting here trying not to die of throatiness. Anyway, peace out. Full of Goodbye.